We're back in the kit lab with your boy AK. Listen, today is a mad one because I'm going to be teaching you guys how to become a deadly winger. We're going to go through all the steps and processes so that you can tear up the pitch. You ready? Let's roll. So you think you can play on the wing? Listen, let me tell you one thing. It's not an easy position to play. The job of a winger is vital for a team. The idea is that the winger has to be able to create chances primarily for the striker, but also contribute with goals and assists to up the team's tally and get them those three points. Now your job as a winger may vary depending on the type of formation that you play in. You might play in a 4-4-2, a very traditional formation, where you have a balance of attack and defence. You might play in a 4-3-3, where you're more attacking minded and have to defend as much, but the impetus there is to score and assist way more. As a winger, you're going to need the following attributes. Intelligent movement, so defenders can't keep up with you. Shooting, acceleration and pace. Crossing. Dribbling. All right, so the first thing we're gonna go through is 1v1 scenarios against your opposite fullback. Now, the key thing here for you as a winger is first and foremost, be confident. In the first 10, 15 minutes, you wanna test the fullback out, see what his weaknesses are. Run at him direct and make him think twice about where you're going to go, whether you're going to go inside, whether you're going to go outside, okay? His idea, first thing in his head, is going to be, I'm going to take him out and make sure he stops running at me. So you've got to play a mind game straight away of whether you're going to go and attack him and keep attacking him, or he's going to clatter you and you're going to lose confidence. Don't lose confidence. The idea here is to win this battle. So if you run at him 10 times, ideally, you want to win six or more out of 10 of those runs against him. That way, he's going to be less confident and you're going to beat him and smoke him every time after that. Okay, the next point we're going to talk about is movement. And we're going to split it up into two parts. The first part is going to be on the ball movement. The idea here, as we discussed in the 1v1s, against your defender, you, when you get the ball, want to run diagonally towards the corner of the box. The reason why is because the defender is going to back up and then wonder which way you're going to go. Are you going to go back out down the line or are you going to cut inside and try and link up with the striker or perhaps get a shot off? Second thing you want to do is be direct on the ball. Okay, give the defender less time. The less time he has, the more likely he is to make a mistake. His job as a defender is to ensure that he delays you. So he tries to get his team back in and organise as much as possible. So be direct and stop him from doing that. Now when it comes to off the ball movement, this is where the intelligence kicks into play. The idea here is you want to manipulate your fullback to create spaces for yourself to run into. So, for example, a lot of the time wingers will use double movements. The reason being is the first movement is used to fool the defender thinking that's what you want to do. The second movement is the actual movement you want to do and therefore your other teammates can find you with that. Now, two key movements are as follows. One is coming in short to receive as a fake and then going in behind with the space you've created. You're dragging your full back with you. The second movement is a fake. So you're going to go out, away as if you're making a run behind. Again, the fullback's gonna follow you, but you're actually coming in short to link up with your fullback or possibly your centre mid, okay? The second phase of movements is in to out and out to in. So you're gonna start off dragging your fullback wide, take him out to the byline. You wanna make sure that you've got enough space between him and the centre back. Now, if he's lazy and he switches off, he's gonna create a fat gap. That gap is for you to exploit by running in between him and the centre back and potentially getting on to a through ball. The other alternative is that you drag him in, get him nice and close to the centre back. And once you do that, you've now made space for yourself on the wing. So you can pull out in the way for you to receive the ball and then get across into the box. Okay, now we're talking about tactical position. This is still an important part of the game as a winger. The idea here is to understand where to be in relation to the ball when you have possession of it versus when you don't have possession of it. Okay, so starting off when you have possession, you want to make sure you're nice and wide. Make that pitch as big as possible because your team is going to be keeping the ball and playing possession football for the time being. You also want to make sure that your opposition are running around, making it hard for them because now the space you've created as a team. If, for example, your opposite winger has the ball in possession, you don't need to be out wide hugging the touchline now. Ideally, you want to tuck in a bit more. Rule of thumb, you want to be no further in than the edge of the centre circle. Okay, that way you know you're a good distance away and if anything breaks across, you still get enough space to run into on your flank. When you don't have possession of the ball, it's important that you, as a winger, tuck in. 
okay? You now want to make yourself as compact as a shape in terms of your team and the unit that you create. You don't want to be nice and wide anymore. Ideally, you want to tuck in beyond or just beyond the 18 yard box and the edge of it. That way you know you're fully compact and again, communicate with your full back, your centre mid and your centre back if you need help with that. All right, so if the opposition winger has the ball on the far side of the pitch, you want to make sure that you come across, but now you're no further than the midline of the pitch. So where that centre spot is at kickoff, no further than that. If you go too far in, you're going to create too much space on this side, that could be a problem, all right? In terms of your crossing, you want to make sure you have a variety of crosses in your locker, from driven low crosses to mid-range crosses, whips, and sometimes crosses from deep as well. We've actually got an episode on our channel. I'll put a little tab up here so you can check out three different types of crosses that you'll need as a winger. In terms of finishing itself, there are different ways you can finish. First things first, if a ball is coming in from the opposite winger, you need to be coming into that back post to make sure that if the strikers miss it, you're there to finish that chance. If you're taking on your fullback 1v1 and you're coming in towards the area, make sure you're on target. At least work the keeper. If not, of course, you're aiming for corners every single time. Finally, make sure you're linking up with your strikers. It's important. You want to develop a very good relationship with them so that both you and the striker are getting goals and assists. There you have it guys, that is your complete guide to how to be a deadly winger. I hope you found all those tips and information useful. Make sure you put them to practice on pitch or in training sessions so that you get comfortable with the ideas that we showed you. If you liked the episode, give us a massive thumbs up, subscribe to the Kit Lab and hit that notifications bell so you know when the next episode is dropping immediately. I'm AK, this is the Kit Lab, we sign out with Bob. Peace.